Another thing that happens when you make a solution is that some of the physical properties of the solvent changes. For example, the vapor pressure changes. Pure water will have a higher vapor pressure than water that's mixed with sugar, for example. So the presence of the sugar lowers the vapor pressure of the water. That affects the freezing point and the boiling point of the solution. You have the formula delta TF stands for the change in the freezing point is equal to I, which is called the Van Hoff factor. times Kf. Kf is a constant for freezing for the solvent, not the solute, times little m, the molality, which is the molality of the solute. The Van Hoff factor is the number of dissolved particles from one solute particle. So we'll talk more detail about what that means. Another colligative property is the osmotic pressure which is abbreviated with capital Pi. And the osmotic pressure formula also has the Van Hoff factor but it has capital M molarity of the solute instead of little m. And then it has the gas constant, R, and the temperature in Kelvin. All of these are called colligative properties because they depend not on the identity of what you dissolve, but on just its concentration, either little m or big M, or for the mole fraction in the vapor pressure formula. PA, that's the vapor pressure of chemical A when it's in solution. That's equal to the mole fraction of A times the vapor pressure PA with the superscript zero stands for the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. The application we're going to use most likely for colligative properties is a problem like this one. We want to calculate the molar mass of a substance, so we dissolve it in water and we record the freezing point. In this case, 12 grams of this solute dissolved in 80 grams of water makes the solution freeze at a lower temperature than pure water because pure water would freeze at zero degrees Celsius. Whenever you have a solution, the freezing point has to go down, the boiling point has to go up. So we can use the formula change in freezing point is equal to the Van Hoff factor times the constant for freezing times molality. The Van Hoff factor comes from how many particles dissolve. So for example, if this had been sodium chloride, you know that sodium chloride doesn't stay together as sodium chloride in water. It dissociates into sodium plus and chloride minus. So one sodium chloride doesn't produce one particle. Instead, it produces two particles. So the theoretical Van Hoff factor for sodium chloride would be 2. In this problem, we're told that the substance is a non-electrolyte, meaning it doesn't conduct electricity, therefore there's no cations and no anions. This would be a molecular solid, and the molecular solid has a Van Hoff factor of 1. For example, sugar. One particle of sugar doesn't dissociate, so you still have one dissolved particle. Delta TF in this formula is absolute value. So the pure water freezes at zero degrees. The solution freezes at negative 1.94. Delta TF is the absolute value of the difference between those two, 1.94 degrees Celsius. Van Hoff factor we know is one. Kf, the constant for freezing, 
can be found in a table and for water the value is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. The only thing we do not know in this formula is the molality of this solute. So if we solve for the molality, the molality is 1.043. Remember, what we're trying to get in this problem is the molar mass of this substance. So that would be grams of this solute divided by moles of this solute. And the grams was given in the problem as 12.0. So the one we don't know is the denominator moles of solute. Moles of solute we can get because we have the molality of the solution. 1.043 molal solution, remember that fraction means moles of solute per kilogram of solvent, and in this case the solvent is water. The problem told us that we had 80 grams of water, so that's 0 0.08 kilograms of water. We're using this molality as a conversion factor to find the moles of the solute. And when you cross multiply, the moles of the solute is 0 0.08344. So if you use that number for the denominator, you now have both parts to the molar mass. And the molar mass will work out to be 143.8 grams per mole.